Once again, I'm James Abiodu Falike. I represent the Kenya Federal Conference. Urge me to authorize the issuance of warrant of arrest against any person or head of organization that failed to appear on honor, failed to appear on honor invitations to investigate hearings before any committee of the House of Representatives. The House knows the precarious economic situation Nigeria currently finds herself, heightened by the global economic recession, driven in part by the coronavirus pandemic and the unfortunate crash in international oil prices. The House further knows that the current price of crude oil in the international market is below $29 per barrel, approximately 50% down from the budgetary projection of $57 per barrel. Concerned that the continued dependence on oil revenue to fund the programs and projects of government is not sustainable, I'm worried that existing corporate tax re uh, revenue leakages are hindering the diversification of the nation's revenue base. The House observed huge revenue leakages over $30 billion attributable to corporations who systematically evade the remittance of their corporate taxes, despite public declarations of exorbitant revenues and profits. The House, at the sitting of 5th March 2020, acting in line with the provisions of Section 62, its 8th and 89th of the Constitution, empowered their resolution its committees on finance, banking and currency, with assistance from uh, uh, banking and currencies, with assistance of over, uh, with from other relevant government agencies to conduct in-depth investigative hearings into all incidences of corporate tax revenue leakages. The sole objective of these investigations, honorable colleagues, by the House is to ensure that Nigeria's tax regime remains fair and competitive and expected tax revenue uh, payout by any organization and or individual is paid appropriately and accordingly to the government treasury. The Committee of Final Banking and Currency, in furtherance of its obligations as directed by the House, issued letters of invitations to various corporations to submit documents of, of their full compliance with the laws of the Federation. The House is amazed that some of these corporations, particularly the telecom operators, under the agencies of the Committee Trustees of Federation of Licensed Com Telecommunications Operators of Nigeria, upon the receipt of letters of invitation, chose instead to file cases in court. The House notes the judgment in favor of National Assembly was delivered on the 13th of March 2020 by, Lord, by her Lordship, BFM Yako J, which reiterated that National Assembly is empowered by sections 88 89 of the Constitution to invite any persons for investigative purposes. The House is aware that the 30 billion tax revenue leakage is based solely on documented evidence. This is not fishing expedition or an attempt to harass any law abiding entities complying with our letters of invitation will afford any persons organizations the opportunity to challenge any false allegations. The House resolves We have resolved to invoke sections 89, 1D, and 2 of the National Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, which states entirely, I quote, to issue a warrant to compel the attendance of any person who, after having been summoned to attend, fails, refuses, or neglects to do so, and does not excuse such failure, refusal, or neglect, to satisfaction of the House or the committee in question and to order him to pay all costs which may have been occasioned in compelling his attendance or by reason of his failure, refusal, or neglect to obey summons, and also to impose such fines as may be prescribed by any failure, refusal, or neglect, and any, so, uh, and any fine so imposed shall be recoverable in the same manner as a fine imposed by a court of law." End of quote. 89.2, Mr. Speaker, I quote, it says, a summons or warrant issued under this section may be served or executed by any member of the Nigeria Police Force or by any person authorized in that behalf 
by the President of the Senate or Mr. Speaker of the House of Representatives as the case may require. The committee hereby seeks an amendment of the Company Income Tax Bill currently awaiting answer to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to insert any company or persons indicted by National Assembly that fails or refuses to pay or remit statutory revenue returns to the federal government through the appropriate quarters should have its directors criminally prosecuted for violation of our tax laws, barred from further business operations in the country, and, and the company blacklisted and delisted from the register of, uh, from the register of the Corporate Affairs Commission. Mr. Speaker, I will ask you. The co-sponsor, mention your name. If you don't know Honorable Linda's name by now, but for the benefit of well, TV, for the benefit of, of your people at home, what's your name? Methods. And it's an honor for me to second this very important motion. So your, your name is Linda. Yeah. Chuba. If I, if my memory serves me right, you used to be were you Miss Nigeria one time or Miss Most Beautiful Girl or something like that? Is that a yes or a no? Is that a yes or a no? Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> but you were. Okay. For the sake of those who do not know, Miss Linda Chuba Equias uh, many years ago was. Uh, she won the contest of most uh, beautiful girl in Nigeria. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, Zabin. Honorable Faliki, this motion deserves that you put a little flesh on it for the benefit of all our members uh, present in the chambers. Go ahead, Honorable Faliki. Honorable colleagues. This House, on the 5th of March, passed a resolution authorizing the two committees of finance, banking, and currency to investigate a motion which was brought to the floor on the over $30 billion revenue leakage in the attempt, of course, to have the views of the organizations that are alleged to be responsible. We wrote letters to those companies, and some of them, of course, came up as an association, especially the telecom industries, the telecom operators. They came up to say, to, to, to they file a, a case in court, which, of course, was done last in the data assembly. And on the 13th of March, and on the 13th of March, Mr. Speaker, the court delivered judgment in favor of the National Assembly to the effect that the House or National Assembly has power to invite anybody for investigative purpose. Mr. Speaker, and colleagues, the Nigeria that we are today deserves critical actions at this critical time. Majority of these companies, Mr. Speaker, have been evading taxes by turning their books over and over again, taking loans, foreign loans, for example, I'll give you some critical examples, Mr. Speaker. There is a particular company, Mr. Speaker, that operates 100% in Nigeria, but only have 10% of its annual income being taxed here in Nigeria. Because the other 90% is based in Mauritius. And this company only has a, a representative office in Nigeria. What it means, Mr. Speaker, is that 90% run, run into billions of dollars, which are, which are taken to Mauritius, do not enjoy any tax, or, I mean, it's not tax by FRS or even the government of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, we have companies who took loan overseas, a foreign currency called equipment loan. These equipments 
ordinarily under the uh, FRX uh, regime, uh, if it was brought in, we give them a capital allowance to reduce the, the value of the tax on the turnover and the value of the tax they are going to pay to Nigeria. But on one hand, they took the load in foreign currency, brought it into Nigeria, and the next day it was credited to a foreign country, to, a foreign, to their shareholders in foreign country. It was credited. It, to, I mean, they took the load, about $90 million, Mr. Speaker, let me be precise. The money came to his accounts, to the, com to the company's accounts, and the next day it was transferred to a shareholder in Mauritius. What does it mean, Mr. Speaker? They then bring it in for record purpose. For record purpose. So that they could take the capital allowance certificates from the bank and seek tax relief from FRS. On the other hand, they now take they apply for Forex from CBF to also pay this loan. They are by depleting our Forex, the, the money that was not used in Nigeria. And thirdly, Mr. Speaker, the equipment that was supposed to be brought in and duty paid, cost of duties paid, were not brought in. These are the skeletons in their cupboard. They don't, they don't want the house to expose. And so, by going, to, by going to court, they seek to prolong and delay the activities of the National Assembly. If we allow this to continue, then we have no business assisting Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, and colleagues, there are so many infractions, and by the time we have the details of their infractions, running to billions of, of dollars, and we are saying, look, these details that we have, we don't want to believe it until you submit your own documents. Rather than being really free to submit their documents and defend the documents before us, they felt that the best way is to stop proceedings by approaching the courts. Of course, the Constitution of the, of the country empowers us, Mr. Speaker, sections 88 and 89, to invite anybody under the sun, even Mr. President, if we need him to answer to questions, he will be invited, and I'm sure he will honor us. How much more Nigerians who are, supposed, who are making money and billions of naira in Nigeria refusing or don't want to honor the invitations of the National Assembly? Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I think it is time to shake the table. I so much thank you. See, colleagues, I want to use this meeting first to thank uh, the Chairman of Finance for bringing it to fall and to acknowledge what is happening in this very important sector. Mr. Speaker, our economy is bleeding. And so we need to work hard, round the clock, to ensure every cobo that should get into our federation account is taken. And so I want to thank him. I want to thank the committee for doing this very excellent job. I will have certainly, you don't need this motion to evoke those relevant positions uh, of the Constitution. But for emphasis and for others to know, I think it's important that we debate this matter, though it's a disgrace man. In our, our own back, our procedure, if the kid fearing are not normally supposed to be subjected to intensive discussion. Mr. Speaker, it is funny that when those companies were seeking for registration, they came as individuals. Individuals as, as a corporate company, individuals as persons to go to Corporate Affairs Commission to seek for the decision of the various companies. Now it comes to the issue of remitting what is supposed to be partly what should go to the services of our nation. They want to come as a, an association to say, no, we will not come to National Assembly, we will not, we will not be held accountable because they have called what is called an illegal, as far as I'm concerned, association. This should not be encouraged, it should not be allowed, we should do our work. And I'm saying for emphasis, Mr. Speaker, that such lawyers, if there are emphasis, if there are provisions, for them to be sanctioned, you are seeing your country, it's only in Nigeria that this nonsense that will happen. Every nation in the world today is trying to live up to its own responsibility to ensure every dying 
is being brought into the system because of the corona impact on the various levels of the economy. Unfortunately, Nigerians who are supposed to help the system work are the ones who want to sabotage. I want to say thank you to this uh, chairman, and we should encourage Mr. Speaker, we should not waste time to invoke the necessary provisions of the Constitution. And I want to employ on the security uh, apparatus that when such uh, uh, orders are given, they must comply. Failure to do that would find them complacent and would take them as associates as far as I'm concerned. And economic sabotage all over, I think the highest punishment should be death penalty. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Speaker, this motion, we are debating it for the sake of it, because we are where we are because of the acts of these companies, in not only the telecommunication companies, including those multinationals in the petroleum sector. As you are aware, last year, the revenue was expected for customs dropped. The one from uh, FRS dropped. Why did it drop? It dropped because of the activities of these agencies. They come in different names and take away our money in different forms in terms of capacity, which never comes. They take the money away, foreign exchange, capacity, building, it never comes. They take them in the form of equipment. But being that as it may, that Nigeria is bleeding, if we also rely on our uh, legislative houses pass and privilege out of section 4, section 5. I think that is sufficient for us to invoke. That is sufficient for us to issue a warrant of arrest for anybody who is looking at the question of Nigeria today that our budget should be cut by 1.5 trillion. That is not the end because it's just starting. We don't even know what tomorrow we may give. If we rely on that act alone, it's enough for us to make sure that they do the proper thing. In this process, or the other companies, all servicing companies, that more will be reviewed at the public hearing. We are not taking position, that's why we are not mentioning names. But let them come up here, run into the court. The court shouldn't give them the protection that they don't deserve. So I so much.